How is it that a group of monastic nuns have been Billboard's highest selling classical traditional artist for the last three years in a row? For these monastic nuns in rural Missouri, number one is becoming a habit. In 2012, they were discovered almost by chance. One of the most unlikely hit records in the memory. Benedictine Sisters. The Benedictines of Mary, Queen the of Apostles. Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles. Their first album and then a second hit number one on Billboard's Bill Classical Artist of the Year in 2012 and 2013. And out of this small monastery in the farmlands of Middle America, just how did their albums go on to captivate hearts and mass media all over the world? Their latest album is topping the traditional classical music show. So many of the nuns have no idea they're such a hit. follow the rule um, in order to um, give ourselves completely in this ordered way away from the world. It's a beautiful, peaceful life. We live it according to the rule of Saint Benedict. The day is really divided between work and prayer. And that's what Saint Benedict is famous for is ora et labora, pray and work. We had so many requests to do an Easter CD that we decided to make that the theme of our fourth recording with De Montfort Music and Decca Records. So we're happy to present Easter at Ephesus. On this Easter CD, the music encompasses not only Easter, but the, the whole of the Easter season, which includes the, the uh, Feast of Ascension and the Feast of Pentecost. We've also included a couple of original pieces written in honor of Our Lady Queen of Apostles. And we celebrate that feast of Our Lady Queen of Apostles right in between the Feast of the Ascension and the Feast of Pentecost. The CD is much like our previous three, all of us singing a cappella. There are some hymns and some chants, some original pieces, um, some that everybody will know from singing at Easter. The Benedictines of Mary do not travel to studios to promote their highly acclaimed albums. However, world-acclaimed, multi-Grammy award-winning producers come to them. Well, I live in Hamburg in northern Germany, so it's quite a trip to get here simply because you have to change planes a few times. So I have to fly Hamburg to Zurich, Zurich to Chicago, Chicago, Kansas City. So it's a long day. My name is Christopher Alder. Well, I was asked to consider recording with the Benedictines. And uh, I thought about it for a while because I've worked with a lot of very famous musicians. I went to their website and heard a couple of things and I realized that what they do is very good and they do it with uh, great inner conviction. And, uh, the music they chose is very beautiful. in tune, it's just the last one, the last note, it sounded like some thought it was going to be shorter than it was. But I feel the nuns are singing even more beautifully. They've thought much more about what they have to do to make music interesting to the listener. Oh, that was nice. Yes, that was good. My name is Philip Sini. Uh, the Benedictine's music has done so well, it's, it's quite a unique sound. It's a very pure, angelic sound. And it's been a super, super experience. It really has. They make a wonderful sound, and they sound like one body of singers together, and it's a very angelic, unique sound. I, I enjoy coming here. I hope there'll be many more. This music is our life. So I think people hear that 
and it inspires them and reminds them there's something more to this life than what I see with my eyes. The gates to the monastery may have closed once again, but not before the Benedictines of Mary offer us another enchanting collection of music to resonate for this Easter season and beyond. <laughs>